सहनावतु सहनो भुनक्तु सहवीर्यं करवावहै तेजस्वी नावधीतमस्तुम विद्विशावहै ओम शांति 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 ओम पूर्णमद पूर्णमिद पूर्णात् पूर्णमोदच्छदे पूर्णस्य पूर्णमाद य पूर्णमेवावशिष्यदे ओम शांति 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 श्रुतिस्मृतिपुराणानाम् आलयं करुणालयं नमामि भगवत् पादम् शंकरम् लोकशंकरम् शंकरम् शंकराचार्यम् केशवम् बादरायनम् सूत्रभाष्यक्रुतावंदे भगवन्ताव बनफुनह गुरु रात में दे मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योम वद व्याप्त देहाय दक्षिणा मूर्तये नमः शांति मंत्र ओम आप्यायन्तु ममांगाने वाक प्राणस्चक्षुश्रोत्रमतो बलमिंद्रियाणि च सर्वाणि सर्वं ब्रह्मोपनिषदम् माहम् ब्रह्मनिराकुर्याम् Mama Brahma Nirakarod Anirakarana Mastva Nirakarana Me Astu Tadatman Nirate Ya Upanishatsu Dharma Te Mai Santu ते मैं संतु ओम शांति 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 नौ ओपन पेज नंबर फाइव दी फर्स्ट पैसेज Gayatriva idam sarvam Bhutam yadidam kinche Vagvai gayatri Vagvai idam sarvam bhutam Gayati che Trayate che So as we said this morning now, Gayatri is now presented as the very symbol for meditating upon Brahman. <coughs> for meditation upon Brahman, various ways, so Omkara was presented. Now Gayatri is presented because Gayatri also is a very popular meter. And it is the very first meter, the shortest meter of all these seven meters in the Veda, Gayatri, Ushnit. Shortest means having the fewest number of letters. <coughs> so, Gayatri, as we know, has three feet, each having eight letters. Thus, there are 24 letters. But as much as, usually, every meter has four feet, like the rest of the meters. Pushnik, Anastup, Trist, all of them. Are, so imagine Gayatri also has four feet. Then 
each feet or each foot has six letters. So this is Gayatri. And it is said Gayatri, this morning we told you the story how Gayatri is most powerful among all the meters because Gayatri succeeded in bringing Sama. Sama is something very precious. Sama is the juice extracted from a, from a creeper called Sama. That Sama juice is that which is offered as an oblation in, in the Sama, so Soma Yaga. So in the Sama Veda, this is very famous Yaga. And so Sama also is the name of a creeper. And this meter called Gayatri succeeded in bringing Sama by defeating all those fellows who are protecting Sama. And also help the other two meters who lost their letters, brought their letters back, etc. And of course, as you said, Gayatri is Ved Janani, it is the mother. This morning we told you how the universe as Brahma, the, the creator, meditated upon the whole universe. Then he found the three worlds of the essence of the universe. The three devatas, three Vedas, three feet of Gayatri. So this Gayatri is also looked upon as the very source of the Vedas. <coughs> and Gayatri also is extremely sacred for the Brahmanas who repeat this mantra. <coughs> and therefore, those now who are the students who are all well accustomed to reciting this Gayatri. They already have very great reverence for Gayatri. And therefore when Gayatri is presented as a, a symbol for meditating on Brahman, it becomes very easy for them. So, in a very interesting way, I did, we selected this just to show how in, in a very interesting way the Upanishad show you, ask you to meditate upon Brahman, which is all pervasive. Brahman is all pervasive, self of all. As you said, Brahman or Paramatma has alone manifest as a whole universe. So, whole universe is manifestation of Brahman. And so, Brahman is all these names and forms, all the beings. Then Gayatri also is all the beings. How? So these equations are told here in a very interesting way. So we'll try to keep track of these equations as the Upanishad tells us in, in you know in, in sequence. So the passage that we just read says Gayatri va idam sarvam bhutam. So Gayatri is verily all these beings. Yadidam kincha that are here. So whatever there is, <coughs> sentient as well as ancient, and whatever, so sthavaran, jangamam vata, saram, gayatriyeva, mobile, immobile, sentient, insentient, whatever there is, is gayatri. How do you say that? So when it is said gayatri is all these beings, then they should provide us a way of seeing this fact that Gayatri is all these beings. So now the equation is being told to us. So for Vagvai Gayatri, speech indeed is Gayatri. Speech is indeed Gayatri. <coughs> Why? Because Vagvai idam sarvam bhutam gayati cha trayate cha. Vagvai idam sarvam bhutam. Speech indeed is all these beings. Because what is speech? Utters all the names, and names are all the forms, that equation we saw. That what are the objects? They can be described as names and forms. For every name, there is a corresponding form. So the universe is all various forms, like pots and pans and etc. 
each form has a name and name is of the nature of speech because name is sound uttered by the speech so what is speech speech is that which utters the sound what are the sounds sounds make up all the letters what are the letters letters make up all the names like a pot is a name and pot are the letters p o t and then p also is a sound o also is a sound t also is a sound is it not so and all the sounds emerge from the organ of speech so speech means sound sound means letters and letters means the names and names means the forms so that way speech is all the forms all the universe is that right so this is the easy connection to see now speech is another quality which upanishad says gayati chatrayate cha so speech is that which sings and protects gayati gay means to sing gayati sings the speech sings and trayate it protects so with the words or the with the speech we sing for example you said horse cow pot cloth sings mean this is how we utter the names so the speech sings or utters all the names <coughs> so asau gauhu asau ashwahide this is cow this is a horse who says that speech says that the speech sings of all the names is it right speech sings of all the names this is a horse this is a cow buffalo table chair etc so you can say so va gayati the speech sings all the names trayate cha and the speech protects also the words also protect how says <coughs> मा भैषी किम ते भयम उत्थितम इत्यादिना इफ समबडी इज अफ्रेड हे डोंट बी अफ्रेड व्हाट इज द कॉज ऑफ फियर व्हाट इज देयर टू फियर सो हाउ डू यू प्रोटेक्ट अ पर्सन हु इज अफ्रेड हे डोंट बी अफ्रेड व्हेयर इज द कॉज ऑफ फियर व्हाई एम अफ्रेड इन सम दिस डार्क व्हाट इज द कॉज ऑफ फियर कम ऑन वी गो टू टेक हिम इनसाइड स्विच ऑन व्हाट इज व्हाट देयर इज नथिंग टू फियर I remember when I was small in the school. So you uh, for wake up at four o'clock in the morning to study, and so I uh, that I woke up at I, uh, alarm must be there. I must have been woken up or whatever it is. We are all sleeping on the first floor of India, second floor of the you know upper floor. When you come down to study, <coughs> because everybody else is sleeping there. So I was coming down the stairs. I heard some sound. <laughs> you know, I just went back. You know, I was scared. I said, "There is a thief! There is a thief!" <laughs> so my father then, you know, got up and came with me. Came down. Switch on. Where is? What's the cause of fear? It was. A, it's a cat that ran. You know, <laughs> and I thought there was. A, no, I thought there was ghost or something like that. So why are you afraid? What's the cause of fear? So his words protected me, assured me there is nothing to worry about. You follow? So how the words create in us an assurance there is nothing to worry about when somebody of authority says that to us. So somebody who, in whom we have trust, you know, strength and authority we have trust. When they say, hey, "Don't worry, I'm there. Don't worry," you know. So how words protect? You follow? so words of speech sings this is a cow this is a horse this is this this is a man this is a woman in this way the speech sings all these beings and protects gayati cha trayate cha so speech has its quality you understand so see this is how speech is many things of that this quality of speech that it sings and it protects is brought to our attention now question is 
How did this ability or quality of singing and protecting, how did it come in the speech? Because of Gayatri. What is Gayatri? So, gaya, so Gayantam Trayate or Gayati Trayate. The word Gayatri itself suggests a little bit of Sanskrit here. In Sanskrit, Gai means to sing. Trai means to protect. So Gayatri. First is Ga and then is Tra, isn't it? So that which sings and protects is Gayatri. So the very word Gayatri means that which sings and protects, right? So singing and protecting is the uh, attribute of Gayatri. Is it clear? The word Gayatri means that which sings and protects. Gayatri, Trayatri, Cha. Now what do we find? The speech also sings and protects. You follow? How do you sing? This is a horse, this is a cow. Protects, don't worry. So speech also sings and protects. So where does the speech get? The quality of singing and protecting, tell me. Because singing and protecting belongs to Gayatri. Because Gayatri is Gayatri. So Ga means that which sings. And Tri means that which protects. So Gayatri by nature is that which sings and protects. Then the speech also sings and protects. Where did the speech get the ability of singing and protecting? From Gayatri. Because Gayatri is there in speech. And that is where speech gets the ability to sing and protect. You know, since you all flabbergasted, isn't it? <laughs> is it a very difficult equation or something? I mean, after all, uh, this, this golden bangle fetch is, it is, it is precious. So what is precious? The bangle is precious. What is really precious? Gold is precious. So what gives the bangle this preciousness? Gold, is it not so? Similarly, the speech sings and protects. But really what sings and protects this is Gayatri and thereby what gives speech the ability to sing and protect? Gayatri. And therefore, that's why I say that Gayatri is a speech. Speech is cause of Gayatri also and speech inherits or derives its ability to sing and predict from Gayatri. Whenever yatha, so but then having said this equation as to how Gayatri is speech <coughs> So, so Gayatri is the same as speech. Now, what is speech? So, Yavai sa Gayatri, Yam Vava sa Yayam Prithvi. So, speech is Gayatri. What is Gayatri? Is this Prithvi? Gayatri is that. So, what is common between Gayatri and Earth? See, Gayatri imparts the ability of singing and protecting the speech. And speech is all the names and therefore all the beings. The speech is all the names and beings. So Gayatri is all the names and beings. Then he says Gayatri is earth. Why? Because earth supports all the beings. Earth supports all the beings. And therefore, earth is all the beings. Because all beings are emerged from earth. And Gayatri is all the beings. Therefore, Gayatri is Prasvi. So that's all the equations are there. So, ya vai sa gayatri, yam vava sa ya yam prasvi. That is gayatri, indeed is this prasvi or as? Prasvi asyam hiram saram bhutam pratishthitam. Because what is the attribute, what is the quality of prasvi? What is the quality of earth? Earth is that in which all the beings have their being because all beings are supported by Earth. All of us are supported by us. So we have our being in the Earth. So Earth is connected to all the beings by supporting them. And being connected to all beings really belongs to, to Gayatri, to speech. 
So therefore, the ability that the earth has of supporting all the beings is because of Gayatri. So you can see Gayatri Ness, Gayatri Tvam. First Gayatri Tvam is Gayatri Ness can be seen in the speech, then it can be seen in the earth because earth also is connected to all the beings by supporting them and Gayatri to the speech also is connected to all the beings and therefore what is Gayatri is this Prithvi. Yavaisa Prithvi Iyam Vavasa Yadam Asmin Purusha Shariram What is this Prithvi the earth? Is this body? So what is Prithvi? Prithvi is that which sustains all the Bhuta, all the beings. All the Bhuta means all the beings. Prithvi earth is that which sustains all the beings. And this body sustains a being. Who is the being in the body? The prana, the breath, the vital air, the life breath is the being. So an interesting equation. I said, this is my mother, father, brother, teacher, brahmana, kshatriya. We say all this, right? When do we say that? As long as the person is alive so long, we say, this is ma- mother, father, brother, this, you know, uncle. But when the prana departs, do we anymore call them father, mother, brother, uncle? The way then, you know, the way they treat that uh, corpse. Just when that was alive, he was the most reverential person. Once the prana departs, is no more father, no more mother, no more guru, no more anybody. And you can see how the body is being lowered. In, in the, you don't like to see that. But anyway, uh, what I'm we, we're saying is that who are we calling the guru or father or mother or brother or friend? The prana we are calling, is it? As long as prana is there, so long that entity is called father, mother, etc. When prana is not there, is no more father, mother. So who is called father and mother or anything? It's prana. And prana is sustained by this body. So body sustains bhuta. Prana is the bhuta. The prasvi sustains bhuta. The body sustains Bhuta, so Prithvi is this body. So Gayatri is the speech, speech is all the beings, beings are all sustained by Prithvi, and Prithvi is the body because the body sustains the Bhuta or the Prana. Where did it get that ability? Because of Prithvi. So Prithvi Ness is in this body, and speech Ness is in Prithvi, and Gayatri Ness is in the speech. If you can see that equation. This is how you have to contemplate, meditate, you know. Yadvi tat purushe shariram idam vava tat yadimasmin antaf purushe rudayam. So now we come to the sharira. What is sharira? What is body? Is nothing but this heart. As long as heart is there, so long the body is there. Heart is not there. Body is not there. So body is nothing but the heart. What is heart? The space within the heart. What is your space? Brahman that shines in that space. So as the scriptures say, the space within the heart is the locus of our mind. Because that and the mind is a locus of self because in the mind the self reflects or shines. And the mind is located in the heart. Heart is located in the body. So body is a heart and heart is a space within that and that is Brahman. So Gayatri is Brahman. You follow? See the, the whole equation here. So that's how you meditate on Gayatri as Brahman. I mean, I just presented this to show how, in very interesting ways, Upanishad shows the co- everything is connected, understand? So unseen, connect. we don't see this connection just, you know, at the first sight. Somebody should draw our attention to, to point out how everything is really connected. 
and different meditations are different connections so how do you see the connection like as lord krishna says mai sarvedam protam sutre mani ganaiva just all these beads are woven in this thread the thread sustains all the, be- the beads you see the beads but don't see the thread but then beads could not be in this particular arrangement unless the thread was sustaining it is it not so so just as unseen thread sustains all the beads that are seen so what we see is this diverse universe but there is an unseen thread or unseen connection in all of them and that is ishvara that is the self of all that's what connects everything and that's how each meditation shows us the hidden connection and thus you meditate upon that connection then you can see the oneness that is obtaining that oneness obtains at very many levels so this is one way of and there are many other meditations some of them we will see how oneness obtains that there is a, so there is a way of looking at the oneness and since we cannot see it ourselves we require the upanishad scripture to show us hey look at this the other day we give the example of a big picture with so many lines that are so confusing we look at it at first time you see oh, nothing but confusion there then somebody says swami ji do you see lord krishna in there so oh, very is he's all confused lines and that person says swami do you see the eyes here oh that i see then i see the other eye yes then there is a nose and the lips and the face and the beautiful hair and then the the flute and then progressively i see that beautiful picture in that lines which are all confusion so when we look at the world is all confusion such diversity such disparity and so many differences that we don't see anything that is similar but then more we come to what is similar more then we can we can be one with others the only way that to establish some kind of a identity with you or oneness with you is to see that what is in you is in me of course brahman is there but all the other connections also are there this is different connections threads are shown which in fact sustain all this so each being is like a bead the thread that connects all the beads in this case it is shown how gayatri is a thread that connects everything but really brahman is a thread that gayatri is brahman and that's how may meditate on gayatri as brahman <coughs> now saesha chatushpa chatushpada shridvida gayatri so now gayatri is six type six such, you know has four feet of six letters each and is of six kinds so the six kinds are pointed out you know speech then bhuta beings then prithvi so speech is all the beings because they are all the names and the speech is all the beings and beings are all sustained by earth and therefore that is earth and earth is nothing but this body because body also sustains the beings and body is this heart and within the body there is this prana so this is six fold gayatri so six fold gayatri with four quarters you follow the quarter is called pada you know in sanskrit chatushpat have you heard soyam atma chatushpat have you heard that where did you hear mandukya upanishad so chatushpat is one that has its four quarters of four feet and parmatma is a chatushpat and this gayatri also is chatushpat because it has four quarters of four feet 
six letters each. So there is also similarity between Gayatri and Paramatma. So Saisha Chatushpada Shad Vida Gayatri. So now from the Gayatri, which has four feet, we are taken to Brahman, which also has four feet. So Atma Chatushpad, Atma also has four feet. Gayatri also has four feet, and Atma also has four feet, or Brahman also has four feet. And so, read the next passage. So, the Upanishad quotes a mantra. So, this is a mantra that is quoted in the Upanishad. Because the Brahman Upanishad and the Brahman Upanishad quotes mantra in support of what it says so far. So, next mantra says, Tavanasya Mahiman Tato Jayam Shapurusha Pado Sarva Bhutani Tripadasya Murtam Divi This sound familiar? Oh Etavanasya Mahima Ato Jaya Gum Shapurusha Pado O Sebhuta Vishwani Tripada Syamrutam Divi Tripadur Do Rait Purusha Pado O Syabhavat Punaha Itavana Samahima Tato Jayams All this is Mahima, the glory of the Paramatma. What do you see? The whole universe, manifest universe, is the glory of the Paramatma. But this is merely one quarter of the glory. The three quarters is something that is... So this is immanent. What is glory is, what is what you experience is the immanent Brahman. The Brahman with attributes and Brahman that transcends attributes. Therefore, Ishvara is what? Immanent as well as transcendent. You heard this expression? He is all pervasive as well as he transcends everything. What is all pervasive must necessarily transcend also. See, for example, the, the gold pervades all these ornaments, right? This, none of these ornaments can be without the gold. Gold pervades all the ornaments, right? But gold itself, is it an ornament? So gold transcends ornament. If gold was an ornament, then it could not be another ornament. Gold itself is beyond ornamentness. It transcends the idea of ornament. Then only it can pervade all the ornaments. For example, an actor assumes a variety of roles. He becomes a beggar, becomes a king, becomes a minister. When, when would that be? When he pervades in all those roles, when can he pervade in those roles? When he transcends those. He is not a beggar. If he was a beggar, then he certainly could not be king. He is neither beggar, nor king, nor minister, none of them. He pervades in all of them. They cannot be without him. But he is without them. B is equal to A, but A is not equal to B. B is equal to A, Immanent is not going to be transcendent. So reality has to be both. You cannot say that reality or Brahman or truth is only Saguna Brahma or only with attributes. Because that which possesses attributes itself must be attributeless. What? So Saguna means with Guna. There is something with Guna or attributes. Something that possesses attributes, right? Brahman with attributes. Brahman possesses attributes. So Brahman that possesses attributes should be what? Possessing attributes. If Saguna Brahma, that Brahman and Guna, what's the relationship there? If Brahman that is Saguna also is Saguna, then what is that Saguna also is Saguna? So to understand this, that when we say Brahman with attributes, then Brahman must be necessarily without attributes. So one that is without attributes possesses attributes, right? Right? Can it be right? One that is without attributes possesses attributes. How can it be? 
Saguna Brahma. Now when you come to Panchadasha, first chapter, I, I think you have studied Panchadasha. Okay. Uh, when you go back, this is, this is discussed there. Now anyway, this is, so Saguna. Gunayana Sahavartade, Gunahi Sahavartade, Saguna. That is possesses guna, that is possesses attribute. That which possesses attributes is called saguna. Guna means attribute. Sa means along with. So saguna means that which possesses attributes, right? So that which possesses attribute, what is that? Is it with attributes or without attributes? Isn't it? So, that which possesses the attributes will be what? Without attributes. But how can it be that that which without attributes possesses the attributes? Do you follow what I am saying? You just said that Brahman with attributes. So, Brahman with attributes. So, Brahman that possesses attributes should be what? Without attributes, which possesses attributes? When you say a wealthy person, who is a wealthy person who himself is not wealth, isn't it? Then he possesses wealth, he is called wealthy. Who is wealthy? One who possesses wealth. So one who possesses wealth is different from wealth, is it not so? Who is wealthy? One who is not wealth possesses wealth, isn't it? Otherwise uh, wealthy also is wealth, then uh, is wealthy. So one who is not attribute possesses attributes, right? One who is not wealth possesses wealth, that's called wealthy. So one who is not attribute possesses attributes, so you call with attributes. So one who possesses the attributes must be one, without attributes. So Brahman without attributes possesses attributes. Does it sound right or wrong? Brahman which is without attributes or beyond attributes, possesses attributes. Can it be? Hmm? When you say Brahman is without attributes, how can it possess attributes? Hmm? No, no, these words are right, Mitya, etc. I would want a little more clarity than just the word Mitya. Hmm? Brahman is a sun, right, right, right. Another word again. So you do tell me how attributeless Brahman possesses attributes. When can it be? Only when attributes are superimposed upon Brahman. Because attributeless Brahman and attribute cannot have the same degree of reality. Attributeless Brahman possesses a reality which is higher, we call absolute reality. Upon that, you, at, you superimpose attributes. So, even though we use the word saguna, means with attributes, that word seems to create the impression that attributes are the same reality as one possessing attributes, which is saguna Brahma, you know. When you use the word saguna with attributes, it creates the impression that attributes have the same reality as Brahman. But when you think about it, the one that possesses attribute cannot be with attributes. So attributeless possessing attribute is what? Only the attributes are superimposed upon Brahman. That's what the Vedantin has to say. That saguna cannot be ultimate reality. Moment you were saguna means there is something that possesses the guna or attributes. Which it must be beyond attributes. So reality has to be only transcendental. The word itself reveals that. Anyway, that's what so. What is etavanasya mahima atojjaya gusya purushah pado osya vishwa bhutani tripadasya amrutan divi padasya vish. All the beings are one quarter. Tripad, the three quarters are in the heaven. You know, divi means in the heaven. It's what? Transcendental. The one quarter is immanent, the three quarters are transcendental. 
This one in three is not many in terms of really, uh, actually, one means a fraction. Three means much larger, not even a fraction. One, the one means what? Mithya. Three means Satyam. But how do you describe that? So you said that the Mithya is like one quarter of the Satyam. Satyam is three quarters. Which is which the way which heaven means transcends and the one quarter goes through. Tripadasya Mutan Divi Tripadur Dodait Purusha Pado Seha Bhavat Puna. That one quarter keeps on becoming again and again and again. So creation is one quarter. And Brahman is three quarters. Creation is imminent. Brahman is transcendent. So, humanity is one quarter, one fraction is Mithya and the, the Brahman, there is truth, is Satyam. So, now Gayatri also is the same thing, there is also four quarters, understand? How many feet Gayatri has? Four. So, Gayatri also is Chatushpath, isn't it? And what is Chatushpath? Brahman is Chatushpath. Of the Chatushpath, so says, Tavan Asya Mahima. This greatness extends so far that we see is what? The greatness of Gayatri was told that it is Shadvida, sixfold. What is it? Vag, Bhuta, Prusivi, Sharira, Bhuda, Prana. That sixfold Gayatri is Mahima. That, that glory of Gayatri is this much that we can see. But what you see is just a fraction of what it really is. Like, there is what they call the iceberg, you know iceberg? is a mountain of ice. So iceberg floats in water, in the ocean. What you see is only tip of the iceberg. So there is an expression, tip of the iceberg. What you see is tip, and the last part is all within water, right? So what you see is the tip. The real large part is hidden, when it transcends, you don't see. What is available seeing is this, of course, which is the glory of Ishvara, no doubt about that. Sahasra Shirasha Purusha, Sahasra Aksha Sahasra Pad. This Purusha, the Paramatma, has thousand heads, thousand eyes. Is that a right equation? Thousand heads and thousand eyes. Sahasra Shirasha Purusha, Sahasra Aksha Sahasra Pad. Thousand heads, thousand eyes, thousand feet. With one head, how many eyes must be there? <laughs> huh? How many eyes must be there? If this Paramatma is thousand heads, how many eyes it should have? It says one thousand eyes. How many feet should it have? Two, it says, you know, Sahasra part. They don't know the basic arithmetic, is it so? That only we, me be if Sahasra means in, in countless, that's all. It's countless hairs, countless eyes, countless feet. Meaning he's seeing through, thinking through all the hairs, seeing through all the eyes, walking through all the feet. Sabhumim Vishwato Vratva Atyatishthat Dashangulam He pervades the entire universe, Bhumi, and also stays 10 inches above. Meaning, it pervades the entire universe in its manifest expression, but in its true nature, he transcends everything. What is transcendent alone pervades everything. The actor that transcends all the roles all alone pervades all the roles. The gold that transcends all the forms pervades all the forms. So, Ishvara that transcends everything alone pervades everything. Etavanas, this is a Mahima that you see, Tato Jayagum, but the Purusha Paramatma is much greater than what you see. So what you see is glorious, no doubt. When the universe in as which the, the Ishvara is manifest is a, is a glorious universe. I mean, what power is there? It's just a wondrous universe, is not so? Whoever really pays attention is time. We don't have time. Otherwise, any, where you see, it's all wonder. The stars are a wonder, sun is wonder, moon is wonder, stars are wonder, even river, everything is wonder, if you pay attention to that. 
meaning the manifest Ishwara is, is, is not an ordinary thing. Is is a great wonder. There's a greatness is manifest. But don't think that this is all there is. Athava Bahunaitena Kim Gnatena Tavarjuna Vishtabya Mahidam Kutsam Ekam Shena Stito Jagat. The tenth chapter, Lord Krishna describes his glories. And wherever you see any kind of brightness, any kind of strength, any kind of power, understand that is my manifestation. Be Arjuna, that is, you know, that's just a part of it. What you see, what you experience is no doubt glorious, is wondrous, is amazing, is beautiful. But don't think that that's all there is. All the scientists can see, of course, and uh, is objectively, it's just beautiful, wonder, wonderful. What about all these stars, and stars are being made, and stars are destroyed, and so then the astronomers see all this game, and this, this going on in the sky, and it's just, it's just, it's just ecstatic. And then black hole, and such, you know, whatever it is, all amazing things. Or you look in the subatomic particles, all amazing things are going on everywhere. Even this is amazing, even if you don't see very large things and very small, but this itself is amazing. The universe is amazing, wondrous, glorious. But don't think that's all there is. What you experience is no doubt wonderful, glorious, great, but that's just a fraction of what it really is. So says, Tato Jayam Shapur Purushaha. Purusha means what? So Purnatvat Purushaha. So Paramatma is called Purusha, Purnatvat, because he is Purna, he is complete, he is whole, he is, he is all inclusive. That's called Purna, which includes everything, it doesn't exclude anything. Good, bad, indifferent, everything is included. Or Purushanat Purusha, that one who dwells in the city of all these bodies is Purusha. So is Purusha that Paramatma alone is manifest as the universe, no question about it. There's nothing other than him. But then Tato Jayam this Etavanasya Mahima. This is all his Mahima, the greatness, the glory. But he himself is much greater than that. In what sense? Padosya Sarva Bhutani. All the beings that you see or experience, which are great. Sun is great, moon is great, all stars are great. It's not that when you look at sun and you know, greatness means what all phenomena is going on in there. We just see a, a bright star, which of course is beautiful. And in the morning it looks one way, and it rises and it, you know, it changes and then in the afternoon it's different and in the evening it is different and to, to visible eyes, but those who look at the sun, they see all kinds of stuff going on in there, what an amount of energy and you know, how much energy is being released and what gases are being produced, another kind of glory. There's a scientific glory, poetic glory, artistic glory, isn't it? Everybody sees their own glory. The moon, I mean, is inspired, inspires artists in one way, musicians in a different way, scientists in yet another way, lovers, and uh, different people in different ways. You add up, it's just glorious. But don't think this is all there is in the universe. Pados, all this is just a fraction of the total glory. Tripadasyamvatam Devi. It's tripad, meaning it's this greater form. Its true nature is divi, it means in heaven. Heaven is which transcends, that's called heaven. The word heaven is used for what? So that which establish divi also means heaven or self effulgence. So that is established in his own self effulgence. Or word heaven can also be used for that which, which transcends. So father in heaven. The heaven may not be meant, be meant as a place, it's transcendental reality. Meaning that other traditions talk of God, no doubt, transcendental. Whether he is in Kula, he is up, in this, up there in the sky, or the Father is in heaven, what is meant is that the God transcends. 
transcendental. It cannot have form, cannot have attribute. And therefore, how you, you can't even worship form, that is not God, attribute is not God. So they think God is only transcendental. We say the one that transcends alone pervades everything. You follow? What is non dual? The transcendent alone is imminent. So this also is also manifestation of God. So what we do is that we worship the manifest God. And that's how all the worship of forms came because from in any era Swami used to say, you can invoke God in any form because he, that is his manifestation. <laughs> so you can see this, uh, you know, this, this tree, banyan tree outside. You can see all kinds of colorful things, you know, the threads around. You think people are crazy, you know, all these illiterate people, all superstitious people, is it not so? They don't know anything. Go around the tree and put a lamp there and what are this nonsense they are doing? Maybe they are. But the person who is doing, is doing it all the faith and devotion, thinking that this is Devata. Whether that thing is Devata or not, at least in his heart there is this Devata. That blesses him. But they see Devata in there. We don't see. But the person who goes around, and ties all this thread, it cannot be when it doesn't see some div some divinity in there. Nobody can tie a thread and nobody can offer a lamp and nobody can make an offering to something which is an inert. Is it not so? Meaning what appears to be inert and useless and nonsense to us who are, you know, very intellectual people, that same thing appears like some devata to this illiterate person. So that person sees Devata in there, meaning that if you see the eyes through the eyes of that person, you will see Devata, will you not? How can you see if it is not there? There is a way of seeing, that's all. So Upanishad shows us how to see things. <coughs> meaning that the immanent universe also is nothing but Devata, manifestation of Ishvara. And there you worship. You worship this immanent, but you are worshipping this fraction. What is this? You are worshipping one quarter of that, one little insignificant quarter. That's what you are worshipping. Yeah, but why do you worship that? In order to go to the transcendental. We start with immanent then, so that is why Gayatri, is only one quarter, becomes the, the, the gateway of going to those three quarters. See, this is the whole prakriya of Hinduism, understand? Don't think it's all nonsense and don't, they don't understand why they are worshipping and they, this is all behind here. That you worship what is immanent, what is evident to you, so that you can transcend. That becomes the, that becomes, a, in fact, that pole for you to transcend. That becomes a gateway for you to transcend. So, Gayatri, which is all pervasive with three quarters, in four quarters of this, three is evident, one is evident, that one quarter becomes a gateway for reaching the three quarters. How can it become gateway? Not by hating it, not by being indifferent to it, by being worshipful to that, by identifying with it. That is how then, that itself blesses you to reach the transcendental. Meaning that we should get the favor of blessing of what is eminent, you cannot ignore this. You cannot ignore the one quarter and, and, and be indifferent and, and, and reject it and hope to reach the three quarters. You cannot. You must therefore make friendship with one quarter. Make it favorable to you. Make it your friend. Kathopanishad, when you study it, will say that Kathopanichat says that Ishvara, our Lord, must be first understood as ease. So when you are now settled account with ease and see Ishvara as ease everywhere, then, then the true nature, the transcendental nature Prasidati favors to you by revealing itself. 
सो वॉट वी वर्शिप ऑफ कोर्स इज वॉट इज एविडेंट मत चेता मत गत प्राण सत्र भक्ति डिस्क्राइब्स But that becomes fair. Lord Krishna says, "When I see my devotees worshiping me with all their heart and without any agenda, then I become favorable to them and I reveal myself to them." So that is how the immanence becomes a gateway for transcendence. That's how the Gayatri, which is one quarter, by meditation upon that, becomes a gateway for Brahman. Which is three quarters, and that is how the meditation of worship of Gayatri. In that manner, is prescribed. So they quoted this: "Pado sa sarva bhutani, tripada sa amrutam devi." So this is the upasana of Brahman with the gateway of Gayatri. So upasana Brahman with the gateway of Omkara was told. Here it is with the gateway of Gayatri that is being told. Different ways. So because Gayatri is very dear to this person, the one the, who is listening to this has been reciting Gayatri mantra, and there were Gayatri mantra and there were Gayatri meter also is very dear and very very revered. So only something that is revered can be used as the object of worship, not anything. When you really become mature, everything will become revered, but not right away. They say, "Why do you go to temple? You mean God is only in temple? God is everywhere. Why do you?" So this is what you know. This poor woman goes to temple every morning and evening, and then this husband doesn't go anywhere. And he doesn't like her going because when she goes, then he doesn't get his cup of tea. He, he, some of these things. So that is why he is always. So then, how do you uh, ridicule this woman? So what? you mean God is uh, only in the temple? Everywhere there is God. That's easier said than done. If it's everywhere, see it. I know everywhere. Right now, I don't see God everywhere. I see it only in the temple. You begin one place. Which is which is reverential, which invokes or inspires you, and then slowly and slowly you will expand to see every, everywhere. So it doesn't begin by seeing because we are so with ignorance, such identification of the body that we are so small and insignificant in our own opinion that I I I can't see even uh, I I can't love other than you know a small little circle. I am so restricted. And to say that see Ishvara everywhere, how can I see? That requires a mind which is all inclusive. Right now, I exclude everything. So see it in one form, and that will bless you slowly to help you see in all forms, and that will bless you to see in formless. So this is how the the principle of worship is there in Hinduism. All based on what the Upanishads are talking, and it is fellows are not stupid. Those who are prescribing all these are not stupid people. They are all people with uh, a, 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 you know very profound understanding of how do you can by step by step how you can reach the ultimate goal. You can't jump. You need need a pole. So that should be provided, meaning that we should begin where we are right now. I am what I am. I'm, as I said, I'm a dense person; can't you know feel anything. So therefore, give me something which is beautiful from my standpoint. You know, which is beautiful. Okay, worship that. Look, see God in that, and then slowly you see beauty elsewhere also. So that's how slowly your heart expands, and that's not expands heart ex, but then you know. <laughs> <laughs> you become more and more inclusive, and so inclusive that you include everything. This is that's just to happen. It is not something that is a flash and stuff like that. You have to grow. You can't be flash something. Uh, I realized, you know, what do you realize? 
unless you grow, unless it happens to you, uh, you know, if you can just flash, you realize from where you are to where you become infinite. It's not a flash. When your mind is so constricted, so restricted and so narrow, and then you say, I became infinite. How can you become infinite? In case you became it, how, how long is it going to stay with you? So we have to, in fact, initiate and undertake the process. And every so the Hinduism is, is an extremely rich tradition. Has place for everybody. Even for those fellows, for them this is a place. You go around the tree. Begin there. It may be very uh, primitive from, you know, somebody's standpoint. But that's a begin starting point. And so, behind all of this is very profound thinking, that, you know, and uh, to help everybody to, to rise, grow, and then ultimately achieve the goal. And fortunately, this is not the only lifespan you have, otherwise you can never make it. You think that all this, from where we are right now, to, to infinity, I don't think one lifespan is enough. Not that there is one, not that this is a first life anyway, not that we have begun only now, I am sure that we are, we have initiated the process long ago. And therefore we are where we are. And we may need also as long as is required. One life is enough if you work hard. But in case you miss out, okay, there is, there is a chance. For other fellows there is no chance, there is only life. So you know, either as our Swami you say, well, what's your name? Then and that go this way. And, you know, <laughs> and my name is, uh, what is it, Thompson, go that way, something like that. You mean this is all one lifetime business or what? Can you ever accumulate that much virtue that you, go, like, you qualify to go to paradise? How idiotic it is. Just because I assume a certain name and I am baptized and therefore I become just favorite and so I get heaven and this father is also idiotic. So people believe in that. And then those who are to me also believe in that. That's another thing, you know. Anyway, but as I said, this is a beautiful thing. At the same time, it requires for us to be dedicated and then work at it. That's all. So that is what is all meant by this the meditation, how it helps us to grow in our beauty. Invoke the wholeness which is within us, the beauty that is within us. That's the whole purpose, you know, of this karma yoga, upasana, etc. Okay. <coughs> Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyade Purnasya Purnamanda Ya Purnameva Vashishyade Om Shanti 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 Shankaram Shankaracharyam Keshavam Badarayanam Sutra Bhashya Krutovande Bhagavanta Upanaf Punaha Ishvaro Guru Ratmedi Murti Bheda Vibhagine Vyoma Vadvyapta Dehaya Dakshina Murtaye Namaha Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Namaha